This conference Enter will now be recorded. Recording on. So, I first of all would like to give you guys an introduction to the lab. And uh, another friend of mine, uh, Bible Canada, has joined. Welcome, uh, Bible Canada. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, your name seems to be uh, well beautiful. First of all, earlier I was reading it Bible. Okay. So I would like to give you guys introduction to the lab for the purpose. And this lab is there available in Cisco D Cloud in our dear London data center. Okay. It's coming up. I'll show you what exactly are the expectation out of from this particular hyper converged infrastructure. Jay and Lias, two of my wonderful friends, they are already doing UCS Unified Computing System. Especially to you guys, I thought of giving you the importance of next detailed topic called Hyperflex. And this is the name of the lab, Cisco Hyperflex version 4 installation and management lab version 2. Okay, and this is our remote desktop. The lab is coming up. Meanwhile, let me uh, say once again, hi, Vibe. I uh, hope I'm uh, pronouncing your name correctly. Vibe Canada. And hope you won't mind saying hi to me as well. I love to hear the voice. Hey, Vibe, are you there? Knock, knock. Okay, no worries. I'll still will wait for your voice. Uh, and I would like to click this shortcut beautiful icon. Wilson, Wilson is joining. Wow. Wilson Ferrer. Welcome again, Wil uh, Wilson. Seeing you the second time. Okay, guys, uh, let me introduce the lab over here to you people. If you take a look on the Cisco Hyperflex, on the left hand side and on the right hand side, we have two different topologies. The objective of the lab on the left hand side is what? First of all, Hyperflex is an enhancement over our unified computing system where our unified computing system provides a separation and then connection between three different networks, that is LAN, SAN, and compute. Hyperflex believes in converging all of these networks in one single box, right? Okay, so, well, I'm just grabbing my highlighter. Guys, these two devices are well known to all of you. These are the fabric interconnects. We know that the fabric interconnects are supposed to be connected to our UCS B series or C series servers. Here, instead of using UCS B series and C series servers, we want a complete convergence. So we will be connecting our fabric interconnects over here with our devices called HX in short. These are our hyperflex devices. These devices all together in totality covers LAN, SAN, and compute all in a single box. Guys, today, more than 10 organizations, companies are there, vendors are there, which are providing 
the hyperconverged solution since it is data center cisco data center topics going on so we are focusing on cisco's solution of hyperconverged infrastructure known as hyperflex now the two different kind of topologies we will be working on in one topology say on the left hand side we will learn how to install our hyper flex setup you can see all the four nodes hyper flex nodes they are faded however over here three of the nodes they are already active and only one node is faded this means in this particular portion of the lab we will be learning the installation but you know with regards to with full regards to cisco d cloud guys cisco has given us a single python file where in i'm sorry h also where in the entire configuration to be put in is already there and you know what this is just a top up we have to do pretty simple it is going to be in this we will learn over here in this particular component of the lab we will learn over here where the three hyperflex nodes are already installed we just need to expand the hyperflex cluster by adding one more node that is this very node I'm sorry. Someone is calling. Oh, one second, guys. Okay, uh, one guys. It's one of my friend in Australia calling me. Dropped him a message. We'll give him a call again. Okay. Call back. Okay. So. these three are already installed one more needs to be added here all the four nodes need to be installed all right so one thing guys over here we have got four different icons this is our unified computing system mm -hmm. manager this is our hyperflex and this is our vmware vcenter server icon which is available in both the formats html and flash hope you know the purpose the difference between html version and the flash version besides in this particular lab in hyper converged infrastructure lab first and foremost thing what we will be learning is the entire setup right and uh, well, this particular component that is Cisco Intersight, though they are showing over here, but I have already requested the Cisco D Cloud tech team to remove it because they are not providing us the Intersight connectivity for this. I will open a ticket once again. Since they are not providing this, they have removed it from the lab guide by over here. In this particular lab, we will look at into C Warm Cisco Workload Optimization Manager tool as well at the end of it. Okay, but coming back, what exactly is our hyperconverged infrastructure? I just would like to give you a purpose of this. And for this, we will move out back to our hyperflex. So the industry terminology for hyperflex is hyperconverged infrastructure. Guys, this is not only Cisco's solution. Well, this F is capital over here, according to Cisco. Cisco and all other vendors, they call it in short, sweet, crispy as HX technology anyway in this particular hyperflex we are going to learn about introduction and architecture overview 
what hardware cisco is using hyperplex cluster installation which is the most important thing and the prerequisite for it and then after the installation we will be learning before in fact the installation there are various prerequisites to build our infrastructure that is how to configure what various components need to be configured components not only includes our switch our fabric interconnect it also includes the firewall in case if they are coming in between where we need to open certain ports on the firewall and then on post cluster configuration tasks something which is very important also we have to do so you can look at into the agenda the main part of agenda is to know about what is hyper converge infrastructure and cisco's solution called hyperplex but also to learn about the installation complete installation process all right so as i was saying it is not only cisco providing the hyper converged infrastructure solution then is there providing vx rail appliances vmware under vmware cloud foundation is providing hx solution they call it as an hx as well hewlett packard by the word name of nimble disaggregated hyper converge infrastructure they are providing the solution nat app is there nutanix is there pivot is there a few months back i got in touch with scale computing where they introduce a beautiful solution called hc3 hyper core solution and this particular organization well i met them over linkedin and this particular organization is claiming to provide one of industry's best hyper converged solution so it is not only cisco which is providing hyper converged solution there are various other companies if i'm not wrong status scale is an israeli company which is also providing the hyper converged infrastructure solution okay traditional it infrastructure has what it has a separate compute right we all know what is compute it has a separate storage area network it has a separate virtualization network and all of them they have their own control plane but in case of hyper converged infrastructure all these separate components called network called compute called storage they are all merged together and give us a unique combo solution that is called hyper flex i repeat this point again your network called lan your compute and your san storage area network all these three different layers network types they merge together and give us one single solution so we are going to learn about it so there are three important things hx data platform it is a purpose built for hci hyper convert infrastructure fast and flexible enterprise grade storage cloud innovation now what is the meaning of this cloud innovation these are the three pillars of hyper converged infrastructure guys cloud innovation this means that this hyper converged infrastructure solution by cisco is manageable from various orchestration tools available in the cloud we know that cisco intersite right it is a cloud based tool in order to manage your device from cisco intersite you just have to register the device into a cisco intersite 
by providing the serial number. Intersite will authenticate the device and then the device will get connected to the Intersite and from Intersite you can configure the device. Cisco is promoting Intersite to at a very big level. Cisco Cloud Center does the same thing than App Dynamics as well. So UCS Foundation, we are saying that this hyper-converged infrastructure is based on a UCS Foundation, which means that we will need, still we will need our UCS fabric interconnects. So our hyperflex devices, they will be connected to our UCS fabric interconnects. So a cohesiveness between our cloud, our UCS foundation and our hyperflex data platform gives us a unique solution called hyperflex. Guys, it does, don't you think it looks like I am marketing this product? Guys, my intention is not to market this product. Storage, compute, and networking. Fully engineered together, that is LAN, SAN, and compute. Optimized for performance and scaling density. Hmm? Okay. Compute network HCI, now. Storage, compute, and network. Traditional, under traditional infrastructure. How they used to work? Separately. In our unified computing system architecture, we have seen the storage is a separate box, compute is a separate box, and for LAN, we have separate set of boxes. Storage now, you know, can be managed through HX data platform. Compute and network can merge together. We have seen that our compute and network merge together and we call it as a unified fabric computing. Cisco unified fabric computing or simple fabric computing. And this nothing but this provides us UCS foundation where of course the fabric interconnects plays a hub role. Then comes what? A hybrid cloud management solution comes with the help of Cisco Intersight, Cisco Worm, Workload Optimization Manager, Cisco Cloud Center, and the storage, compute, and network, they merge together in a unique solution called Cisco Hyper-Converged Infrastructure. Which means with the help of these orchestration tools available in the cloud, you can manage storage, compute, and network together. Okay, to me, it looks I am marketing this product. So guys, I just wanted to tell you one simple thing. This particular is a distributed architecture. What we have over here, this is our hyperflex. This is our hyperflex and this is also our hyperflex device. These hyperflex devices are all connected to where they are all connected to fabric interconnects well guys you can simply by seeing it you can make it out the model of it those who have done it first generation second generation third generation and now even the fourth generation of fabric interconnects are there first and second generation now they are end of sale and end of life we know that when it comes to our servers a virtualization capable servers what we normally do we install a layer on top of the kernel and that is called hyperflex and then on top of the hyperflex we install our virtual machines and we have learned it very well how to do the networking in between those virtual machines and in our aci we have seen that how the handshaking right Handshaking between our ACI controller and our vSphere controller is done and what various functionalities advantages in terms of configuration we can obtain. Okay, now this is slightly different. Over here, in case of our hyper-converged infrastructure, we first of all 
kindly be noted we deploy hyperflexes device in a cluster format and cisco's recommendation is minimum three hyperflex nodes you have to connect physically minimum three hyperflex nodes now if you see over here we have got one two and three different hyperflex nodes over here what do we have on top of them to bring them under a common control plane is nothing but called hyper converged data platform well this terminology we have seen in our previous slide also hx data platform so hx data platform is for what it is for example to bring the distributed architecture at a common place where on top of it then we can install our hyperflex our controllers controller vm what controller i'm going to tell you and not going to tell you but going to show you as well okay and then these virtual machines how do we install we know very well the installation of these virtual machines and not only these guys uh, those who have attended aci so lavesh actually uh, even in data center version 3.0 unlike the previous version 2.1 which you attended with me previously uh, there is an enhancement which has been made and uh, we did clone the virtual machines right and uh, we did install our oba file as well so just wanted to tell you guys that these virtual machines are available in the form of ovas open virtual appliance or we call it as a ovf as well so you just need to install it all right then what in case cleaning it in case you need to add you need to expand your cluster from three hx nodes to one more hx node guys it is easily expandable and you know this is the very first lab which we will be doing we in as i have already shown you in our very first lab let me present to you once again in this particular lab we are going to have three hx node already built in a cluster we will be adding one more hx node in the cluster that is nothing but that is called hyperflex expansion there are certain prerequisites there are certain caveats to be taken care of we will be going through them in detail okay so trying to tell you in case if you want to expand your cluster from three node to four nodes that is easily expandable and what happens hyper converged data platform gets expanded over all the hyperflex nodes okay or that if you want to expand one more you can do it if you want to contract it you want to decommission any of your hyper converged infrastructure node you can easily do it as well that is the beauty of hyper converged infrastructure that is expansion as well as decommissioning of the server is more easy here okay let us look at into the anatomy the anatomy of our single hyperflex node we all know that there is a hypervisor right and there is also a data store well probably you remember uh, guys chai and yes we cloned one virtual machine and we took the file system while cloning it using nfs where exactly it is it is lying there in a data store kindly be noted that there is always a data store okay 
and then there is a hypervisor as well what do we have over here we have various machines deployed various virtual machines deployed and among those virtual machines there is another virtual machine this is called hx controller vm guys you know what exactly is this this is called storage controller vm now the purpose is to tell you that for the purpose of hx node installation right not only that we de deploy virtual machines various virtual machines but also we deploy one virtual machine called storage controller vm all right don't trust what i'm saying now trust on yourself on back onto the lab back onto our ucs manager uh, no our v center server and what format html okay well um since the class is going on uh didn't get a chance to talk to you uh pipe kananda and wilson freda but uh this is uh, a day one class yeah i would like to hello oh hello bye yeah it's uh <laughs> how are you i am all good thank you so much bye so oh, yeah, actually my um, name is like uh, vivekananda vivekananda okay yeah actually it's not vhb actually so it that may oh, be vivekananda yes huh? you are typical bengali babu ha huh? babu moshai uh, not not bengali actually uh, but you can say that name is in bengali but i am not a bengali i am from bhubaneswar odisha oh odisha it's not very far from bengal so yes yeah. i understand vivekananda very good so this form of vivekananda i am uh, listening for the first time okay so vivekananda i'll uh, discuss about your expectation all of from this course and about you as well uh, in another few minutes but let me continue over here guys nice. yes yeah, sure. our Mware V Center server is in front of us. I believe we are all aware of it. And for you, my dear friend Lavesh, this is a newer version of V Center server. Uh, this is called HTML. If you want to take a look on the older version, that is probably also available. I have uh, uh, this flash version is an older version. Not sure if the hyperlink will work here. this is what you have done with me previously yes the difference i'll just uh, give you a glimpse of it this older version is taking time to come up uh, nevertheless i wanted to show you guys something this tab is known as host and cluster tab in this tab this is our v center server this is our uh, cluster and this hx cluster a is the name of the data center in the data center if i expand over here uh, i'm just trying to expand this navigation pane it should not give us a pain okay hx a hyphen 1 a hyphen 2 and 3 these are three of our esxi hosts which are nothing but the hypervisors which are installed on top of individual hyperflex node 
these are the three virtual machines let us take a look on the operating system they are running they are running operating system called sent os operating system and this virtual machine is hosted by our first esxi host hx hyphen a hyphen e dot dcloud dot cisco dot com with an ip address we are not pro provided with the access to this this virtual machine is hosted by our second hx node hx hyphen a hyphen 2 dot dcloud dot cisco dot com and thus our third virtual machine and then below it guys you can see over here st ctl vm these are our ubuntu linux operating system running and these are nothing but they are known as our storage controllers vm they are the vm but they are meant for the purpose of storage so think of one particular point our objective is to converge our storage our san our lan and the compute this is what it is meant for we will be talking in detail about it. so we have got one storage controller vm hosted by our first hx hypervisor second storage controller hosted by right our second hx node and third by another hx so over here each and every hx our hyperflex node has his individual hypervisor his individual storage controller vm and his own individual vm as well point so we can take a look over here three different all right let me take you guys to the second tab one by one we will expand it this is our data center we have got storage controller vms these are the three storage controller vms so this means what you know when we are doing our installation work in our installation it is not that we will be deploying our hyperflex that is esxi we will be deploying our virtual machines we will also be deploying our storage controller machines storage controller virtual machine okay distributed virtual machines now you know what uh, discovered virtual machine sorry it is blank <coughs> a tab beautiful tab called storage tab what it is showing us first of all this is our storage tab in the data center the storage tab is saying that we have hx a ds1 okay let me see if uh, the flash version is working because the yes this is the flash version right uh, this is the flash version of the center server what is the purpose of opening it up the purpose is to get to see the definition of each and every component under the tab called getting started however this getting started tab is not available in the flash which is the newer version of our vcenter server so i holistically believe in uh, older version to get to see the definition and we want to see the definition of the what is this this is our data center inside the data center for our storage what is this this is our data base HXADS is database. This is a database for our fiber channel protocols, networks, our virtual SAN setup, our file system, and our iSCSI database. And what is this? This is also our database. So this is called, say guys, this is called database. Uh, this is our yeah data 
store and this is another data so so we can see over here that we have three different data stores for our storage controller vm required files which includes what the fiber channel setup the file system setup the virtual sand and iSCSI connectivity this means our storage controller vm requires the following kinds of data stores okay then this is our virtual our networking tab and in the networking tab we can see guys again this is very important to understand that we in our virtual networking tab can see storage controller data network storage controller management network storage controller replication network vm network this vm network is for our lan we have already seen it in our aci these three storage controller network types data management and replication they are the new network types they are the new virtual switches for three separate purposes and there is another beautiful virtual switch called v motion this means what this simply means that our hyper converged infrastructure is capable enough to provide the virtual motion machine motion as well seeing this it gives us an idea that we are going to do something in a very hyper form okay again this is a 50000 feet overview of our hyper converged infrastructure understanding i would like to show you something more and that is back on to our i would like to show you the connectivity of these devices with our fabric interconnects Guys, this uh, session is going to be a shorter session uh, with an attempt to ignite you the importance of this technology. I'm not focusing over here in this particular session, focusing towards uh, teaching you or delivering you, but this session is to ignite you to understand how important this is. So you can consider this to be as a webinar okay i uh, 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 you know what i have done i have unnecessarily zoomed it okay and i want to bring this in front okay and to you lavish when you were doing ucs with me right uh, approximately two years back right that time the fabric interconnects introduced to you where you worked on can you tell me what fabric interconnects were those the models mm, i think is 22 something was that so it was fabric connect second version absolutely mm -hmm. yeah second generation 6248 yeah, second. and even in data center lab right which you faced the fabric interconnect was 6248 but right. in this particular lab cisco is using 6332-16 up second generation fabric interconnect with only 16 unified ports uh, probably i explained you uh, i showed you 6332-16 up that time as well But you know, my purpose of showing you this particular picture is to tell you guys that over here, we can see server one, server two, server three, and server four, right? And what are these servers? Let us take a look on these servers. And these servers are 
I have reduced the okay, hundred percent is fine. Product ID. First of all, let's take a look at the name. The name is Simple Server One Two Three. All right. Okay, and one quick thing which you can see and appreciate is three of the servers they are okay, okay, okay. One server is unassigned. Unassociated, sorry. This means what? That three of the servers they are already installed. One server needs to be attached to the existing cluster of HX, three HX node. So that is the reason it is unassociated. The very first lab wherein we will make sure that this unassociated HX node also gets associated. So I'm say calling it to be an HX. Let us look at into the product ID of this. Product ID is HX 240C M4SX. And let us take a look on the model. What the model is saying? It is Cisco HX. 240C M4 SX Hyper Flex system. So these are the four servers which are Hyper Flex servers which are connected to our fabric interconnects. So very first and the foremost thing is this is an advanced connectivity in our existing UCS infrastructure. Right? So this doesn't mean that in case if your fabric interconnects are already connected to UCS B series and C series servers, you cannot connect Hyperflex. Yes, you can connect your Hyperflexes, Flex devices there itself as well. Okay, and one important thing which I would like to show you now. The very first thing what we do right the very first step of our ucs which we holistically do is you know that is uh, uh, can you show me that the hardware uh, diagram uh, hardware model of the hyperplug oh very good this is your hyperplex joy awesome thank you so much for asking my friend this gives you details of complete hx how it looks like i'm going to uh, present it to you uh, in detail currently the front plate called bezel b e z e l is removed and what you will happen to see over here you can see various ssds right don't worry i'm going to show you this in detail both from the front just from the rear the, the, uh, uh, yeah, these things I am uh, still not getting actually because he said it is a co the combined of LAN, SAN, and compute. Okay, so the compute uh, we have B series and C series also, so which is it will support hyperplus both uh, blade server server and how about that uh, uh, operating system actually? So we will have like uh, three different operating system or how actually it is? Okay will uh, come to that definitely i understand there are a lot of questions which are going to come that base actually yeah so we i will come to them one by one so this is how your hx looks like so under this you can this is general information product name vendor revision product id serial number and uh, UUID, unique identifier number, and all. And then under inventory, you can take a look, detailed look of it. Then under uh, inventory, you can see motherboard. Then it's SIMC details, it's CPU details, etc. What CPU it is? It is processor architecture is Xeon and uh, product name is intel r zion r e5 product id is so and so so complete details you can patch over here all right okay okay and 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 
any other question you have guys on top of you yeah, i do have one question as you said it is the you know uh, combination of three technologies like storage compute and network so that mean uh, you know having said that means the storage need to be installed locally on the ucs chassis can we use a you know uh, network based storage in that solution that is that is absolutely right the storage is locally placed inside the JC itself inside the hyperfax node itself so there is it is prompting me to come to uh, you know the hardware architecture of it okay, i'm just skipping a couple of the uh, slides and uh, show you something now if you look at into this now more closer system drive all right if you look at into the hyperflex node the very first or the first few drives in your hyperflex nodes right let us look at into what we are calling system drive or log drive one sata ssd slot 2 through 24 starting from 2 till 24 they are what they are 23 sata ssd they are known as capacity drives capacity drives for high available high performance storage so yes it is true that for the purpose of storage you have a uh, dedicated drives for the purpose of your vms you have certain drives so system for the purpose of system you have a separate drive or log drive to capture the logs for the purpose of your storage you have separate drives over there so instead of having your storage array or jboard those that particular functionality for to be performed by storage array and jboard is embedded right into the server by providing dedicated drives to it Abu Bakar has arrived. Thank you, Abu Bakar, for joining. But uh, though it's late, but nevertheless, okay. So I will discuss this in more depth. Okay, but one another important thing with this regards. as the discussion is going on about the internal anatomy oh, well before it's bad you know jumping over without uh, getting the confirmation so lavesh does it make sense to you ah uh, yes yeah so all the functionalities are yes built into the hx node itself okay all right so uh we'll not be going much uh deeper into it the purpose is to just introduce a job of this and jump to office the team that should be all right uh all right thank you uh lavish thank you so much for joining catch you soon okay guys just wanted to tell you before uh, i could find up the session for the day right this particular node the storage vm we were talking about and i showed you right this node has got two plugins right one is known as io visor and other is known as vaai why what is the purpose of these two beautiful plugins guys by the virtue of these plugins only that our storage controller vm which over here we can mention as hx controller vm they it is connected to the hyperfixer so io visor that is input output visor what he does he is actually an interceptor 
he is an interceptor of all the input output messages they which are sent to the storage controller vm right and VAAI, which stands for VMware vSphere Storage API Array Integration, is nothing but this particular plugin takes the ownership of all physical storage resources like SSD, HDD, etc. Where do we have those physical storage resources? We have those physical storage resources in this particular box, as I just showed you. So this particular guy who is the storage controller virtual machine with the help of VMware vSphere storage API integration takes the ownership of the physical SSDs, HDDs, etc. placed inside our HX box. So what he does is this VAI talks to those resources via direct access path called VM kernel or ESXi host. Need not go into the nitty gritty of this guys. This is a deeper anatomical understanding, but I do call it to be as a marketing slide. Well, dynamic data distribution. What is happening in case of a traditional file system right our conventional file system if you talk about any vm information first goes to the local controller and then this information goes to the remote controllers but in case of a dynamic data distribution with the help of hx data platform now see the difference in the previous case the hyperflex data platform layer was absent here it is available so when we deploy this hx data platform what happens the moment the this is called the data distribution right data distribution this particular vm wanted to send certain data to the storage controller vm what this vm is this is our storage controller vm right so in case if we need to send certain data to our storage controller vm this is a dynamic data distribution by the virtue of deployment of HX data platform, which is available with our Hyperflex solution only. So this Hyperflex solution provides us HX data platform. What he does is he strips the data across all the HX nodes simultaneously. And the data can be stored not in, only in the local storage controller vm but can be stored in all the storage controller vm as available this is called dynamic data distribution this provides a faster convergence now think of a solution where one virtual machine needs to fetch the data from the storage controller vm so not only that you can fetch the data from your own local but dynamically all the storage controller vms are available to provide you the data the advantage is fast in fact super fast jet fast right functionality well, we as network administrators may not be able to understand the jet speed requirement, but our compute, our storage guys, every day they fight to get the jet speed data flow. 
So again, marketing. Why I'm marketing Cisco's product? There are so many other wonderful vendors as well providing a similar or a better solution. Probably we not may not be knowing it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, well, I would like to bring this baby now at a pause or at a halt so that I can discuss with you guys. All right. Okay. So uh, let me request our dear ma'am to stop recording. <clears throat>